Hello guys and welcome to this Volks Wizard video and in today's video we're going to look at one of my favourite Volkswagen group cars of all time, the Audi TT Quattro Sport 240. It is ridiculous, it's not been on my channel in the four years I've been making videos but I owned this car for about a year until April 2016 and that was roughly the time I started making videos so it just missed the cut but we're going to make up for that today and this car's already been in the limelight actually because it was the Audi driver magazine project car during 2015 and I made a few modifications to it then to make it even better for track use which we'll go into later so without any further ado let's have a look at this Audi TT Quattro Sport 240 Okay, so just 800 came to the UK as every advert on Autotrader has reminded everyone for the last 10 years. And there should have been a thousand actually, that's a bit they don't tell you, but they didn't sell very well at the time because they're even less practical than a t normal TT and they're not particularly practical in themselves. A little bit of trivia is that they were made to celebrate 25 years of Quattro. So we're at the 40th anniversary this year, 2020, and this car's 15 years old. They were only available in a small range of colours. You could have Mauritius blue, you could have a straight silver, you could have Ava silver, and you could have Misano red. You could also have black if you didn't really like the idea of the contrast roof, but this has become a defining characteristic for the car. Other little detail changes are, let's talk about the wheels. There are kind of plain design but they're very motorsporty and the most important thing about them is that they're wider at the back. Now I've bought a few of these and pretty much every time the wheels are on the wrong part of the car so you might have two back wheels on one side for example or sometimes even the back wheels on the front because garages assume it's largely front wheel drive and therefore you would have the wider wheels on the front but that extra width which you can tell by this part of the wheel that's not actually on the fronts. I think it's H eight and a half backs eight fronts it's just smooth transition into the, that bit on this front wheel it makes a real difference to the stance of the car i should point out this one is on h and r cup suspension so it's just it's not coilovers it's shocks and springs the facelift tt was 20 millimeters lower than the original tt and this i believe was the same ride height as that but this cup kit drops it just five mil so it will drop a normal TT, the early models that are quite high, 25mm, but this is just 5mm lower than standard. But that 5mm makes such a big difference to the stance of the car. I think it looks amazing, really, just that little drop. We've got the same size tyres front and back, strangely, but there isn't really an awful lot of room in the arches for anything more. And these are a little bit bigger than the ones on every other model. So these are 235, 40, 18 every other TT is 225 40 18. Now not only does that mean they're wider but you also get a bit more profile as well so they only just fit in the arches without rubbing. In fact if your suspension is out of alignment they will rub. You also get black mirror covers and you get this lovely glossy grille. So I think the 3.2 is very similar. It's basically a 3.2 styling kit but it's also a 3.2 body shell. We'll come to that in a sec. So the 3.2 gets this, and other models get this grille, but on this car it's lovely phantom black. So it doesn't fade or anything like that, it's beautiful. And even these grilles are phantom black. So at the back we've got the bigger spoiler from the 3.2, but instead of it being rubber, it's also phantom black to match the roof. We've got black exhaust tailpipes, which on later cars like Mark II TTRS, that means it's got a sports exhaust and you get the honeycomb here which is uh, pretty good and that's another 3.2 thing now you would assume it was a 225 shell but it's actually a 3.2 shell as well and you can see that when you look underneath the boot carpet because there's no parcel shells they do give you this luggage net which is amazingly still with this car Okay, so let's just get this cover up. So on a 225 model, you can fit a spare wheel if you want to. You have to fit a space saver. I think they might even come with a space saver. But on this car, you've got the 3.2 floor as well, which doesn't allow that. And it means the battery can sit at the back 
like that which obviously is better for weight distribution so yeah it's an interesting little difference over the normal 1.8t because under the bonnet it looks just like a normal 2t5 or even well, even other models so there it is it's a 1781cc four-cylinder turbo petrol engine producing 240 PS so about 237 brake horsepower so slightly up from the 225 model but 10 PS below the 3.2 but they're such different cars it's not even worth considering which one's the most powerful because of the way this drives it's 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 much more engaging as we'll come to later the 3.2 is a bit of a cruiser so yeah it's a pretty reliable one you can tell the higher power ones because they've got the boost pipe up here rather than tucked down the side there and i mean the funny thing is you've still got this battery area here but there is no battery in there they're pretty reliable they just need regular cam belt changes every five years or possibly 60,000 miles because they did have a history of braking plus they need regular oil changes i wouldn't go beyond 10,000 miles i'd probably be looking at 5,000 miles if it was my own car before we have a look inside i just want to show you one little geeky thing about the tt quattro sport so there on the inner wing is the vin sticker with a chassis number on it you can probably just about make out it says quattro gmbh there well, that's a subsidiary of Audi, a separate company that was responsible for the RS model. So they made the RS4, RS6. And this car has got one of their chassis numbers, even though it's not an RS model. And they're very special things to have, really, because they've got their own chassis sequence. So instead of WAU for Audi, they've got WUA, which is a UA from Quattro. And that makes this car a very, very special car. And the funny thing is, the, the TTRS that came out in 20, 2009 did not have a Quattro GmbH chassis number. I don't even think the next model has. So, strangely, this non-RS TT is more of an RS than the TT RS. Now, let's have a look at the pièce de résistance. So you've already seen in the back where there's bits missing, no back seats, no parcel shelf. Well, the standard spec gave you these beautiful Recaro pole position buckets. See, it's beautiful in their simplicity, really, because there's nothing on them you can adjust apart from back and forth. You do get adjustments of the steering column, though, up, down, in and out, so you can get quite comfortable. They do wear, but that's actually quite a good patina on that one. Some of them will wear right through the leather, so I wouldn't even improve that one at all. And you can make yourself more comfortable by taking these out putting stuff underneath them just padding it there's even a lumbar pad there we've got alcantara on the handbrake cover gear knob and the steering wheel now this one was reconditioned by me i had it retrimmed and i asked them to do the stitching in the blue to match the bodywork normally that would be i think probably silver or black uh, probably actually yeah not contrast this car's got cruise control which is quite a rare option quite desirable it's got the pretty cup holders which just screw onto the center console there they're quite a desirable accessory it's got bose sound system which is probably a bit incongruous in such a basic car but yeah it's quite a popular option and it's got this lovely aluminium inlay into the glove box to remind you it's a quattro sport so compare that to the little letra set on an edition 30 and you know that just shows you how special this car is no heated seats which was a tt tradition but obviously it's not possible with these buckets now there was an option no cost to swap to the regular comfort seats which came in leather and alcantara they weren't full leather just leather and alcantara you still didn't get anything in the back you just got that shelf which i'll show you if i can oh yeah it's quite easy that's just a luggage shelf there but yeah you could if you didn't like the look of these seats and they're not for everybody to be perfectly honest you could go for a much more comfort orientated seat oh and a lovely little touch is like a lot of porsches they even paint the back of them 
in body colours. So that's a Mauritius blue back, which is really, really cool. The cockpit is just beautiful. I mean, these cars now are over 20 years old in design, and that just looks so clean and fresh. And that's the beauty of it being just so minimalist and elegant. OK, before we go for a drive in the TT Quattro Sport, I just want to walk you around the modifications that I made to it when it was the Audi Driver Magazine project car, because my mission was to make it into a better track day car. And as a video, I'm going to put a link on screen to now hopefully shows you, I think that went rather well. In the video, I'm chasing a TTRS, which has got 100 more horsepower. But my little cheat is actually this car then was on Toyo R888R track day tyres, which are an amazing track day tyre. They're not so good for the road, not least because of the video shows you they're really, really noisy. The car's now on some normal Toyo road tyres, which are perfectly good for road use. As with most track day projects, I've upgraded the brakes. Any TT with a 1.8T engine comes with three 12 millimeter brakes, even if it's only like a 150 horsepower convertible. So I fitted the 334 discs from the 3.2. I've also fitted the two piston calipers and upgraded the pads to EBC yellow stuff, which I fitted to all my track day cars and they've been brilliant. I did try it originally with some normal padded pads, but they caught fire within two laps. These were perfect at the next track outing. I've also upgraded the brake hoses to Hell braided hoses, front and back. The only change at the back though, apart from that, is to fit EBC yellow stuff pads. It comes with vented discs as standard. Anyway, as I mentioned earlier, the car's a little bit lower, 5 mil, because of the H&R Cup suspension kit, which doesn't sound like a big difference, but the difference it makes to the way the car drives is actually much more than you'd expect for such a low drop. And the only other modification is under the bonnet, where I fitted an ITG panel filter. So that's five years old, and it still cleans up beautifully. So without any further ado, unfortunately, we're not going to drive it on track today, but let's go and drive this TT Quattro Sport on some brilliant English country roads. OK, guys, here we are behind the wheel of the TT Quattro Sport, and I've got to say, it does feel like a very special place to be. That's mainly because I'm sitting in this superbly hugging Recaro pole position bucket seat that's basically just a plastic shell with Alcantara coated sponge velcroed to it. But for some reason, it seems to do a better job of supporting my lower back than a big padded seat you get in a normal car. It's remarkable. The other reason it feels special is because we've got the Alcantara touch points of steering wheel, gear knob and handbrake lever. I don't think they ever get fitted into a car that isn't special to some degree. And reminding you pretty much all the time you're not driving just a normal TT is the ride. So the H&R suspension kit, it's only a 5mm drop, but blimey, it feels a lot firmer than the normal TT, which to a degree has hobbled the car's usability on the road, but when you get it on the track, especially on some sticky tyres, it is incredible for a TT how it goes round corners. But it's not too bad on this kind of road. If your road's not too broken up, it does flow reasonably well, but it's nothing like as delicate as, say, a Golf a GTI. Jogger's nipple is definitely a risk. Now, there was a video that came out recently from Piston Heads that reviewed the two TT RSs, Mark II, Mark III, and the TT Quattro Sport. And the reviewer said that the Mark I Quattro Sport was mute, didn't make much noise, which I generally agreed with most of what was said, but I don't really agree with that because, as well as the relatively loud four-cylinder rawtiness. We've also got a lot of huffing and puffing coming from that massive KO4 turbo that sits just the other side of the bulkhead there. It sounds like Henry the Hoover has gone feral under the bonnet. It sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's not a cultured flat six like you'd get from Porsche, but it's 
definitely not lacking in character. Now we're on a narrow B road here, one that I often film up GTIs on, and this car feels just incredible on this road. It's lovely and compact. It's much smaller than the Mark II and Mark III, which isn't so great for your passenger because it does feel a lot more intimate, but on this kind of road, it's a different kind of car to the, to the later TTs. And of course we've got bigger brakes on this car the 312s really are not up to the job of 240 horsepower if you're a spirited driver but these 334s which i'll demonstrate just over this brow are just amazing and they're very feelsome they're not like a switch you can actually feel them just about to lock up like they did then a lot of fun this car a lot of fun yeah it could quite possibly be my favorite TT of all time I think yeah I like the RS's don't get me wrong I love that five-cylinder engine but when you open it up you do get to silly speeds very quickly this car I'm pretty sure you can have a lot of fun at same speeds and frankly I think that's what it's all about these days. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this Volks Wizard video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment, please click that bell icon as well for notifications. And I'll see you for the next one, hopefully very soon. Stay safe, guys.